right? Yeah, very good. Not the sheep very fans, good. but the boat, how do you yeah. say sheep fans in um, uh, Yeah, fans divide. <laughs> fans divide. Fans divide, yeah. Borada, fans divide. to the top, the boys are up on there now, and then we'll take them up towards the lake, we'll go to the top, we'll turn them, and we'll bring them back round over that hill, and head back to where we started from this morning. Bro, what do you reckon? <laughs> Sounds so simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really organised chaos, Yes. <laughs> in a kind of crazy way. But. You can stay here for a bit, yep. just just to hold till my cousin comes up, yep. and then literally just follow him up, and we'll you'll come to the top there and come right round with him, yeah, and then I'll see you at the top. Good night. Yeah, I think we're 
all good. Yeah. Aye, I'm, I'm not, it's not quite like Netflix, is it? Nah, don't worry. <laughs> okay. I've done a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were going to say? Borada, Sheik fans. Did I get it right? Yeah, very good. Not the Sheik fans, but, but the, how do you yeah. say Sheik fans in Welsh? Um, uh, yeah, fans divide. <laughs> fans divide? Fans divide, yeah. Borada, fans divide. That's good morning, Sheik fans, in case you couldn't work that out. I say it at the start of every video, so I'm sure you would have got it. As we've said in that intro there, we're here today with the man himself, Gareth Wynne Jones, on his farm down here. Now, Gareth, I've seen it written down where we are. Yeah. But how do you say it? Carnedai. Carnedai, yeah. Carnedai. So yeah. we're in Carnedai in Wales, North Wales. Incredible. We're right at the sea here. I mean, this place, I've seen it as many of you will have on Facebook so many times. Yeah. Gareth, you're now at 80 odd thousand on Facebook. Yeah. And for a lot of my American uh, sheep fans that are watching in Canada and all, all these other amazing countries that watch this channel, I'll put a link to Gareth's page in the description stuff. It's just fantastic. He's just constantly posting updates from his hill farm here in Wales. And it's not just, it's not just a wee hill farm. No, it's quite a big, big area. So this is the biggest open area in England and Wales. So this mountain, this area is 27,000 acres and it's the most northerly part of the Snowdonia mountain range. Is that right? Yes. That's quite incredible. Now I noticed you see England and Wales here. I take it Scotland's got some bigger ones. I must have. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go down that road. No, no. We're Celtic Listen, cousins. That's it, we are. We're all friends here. It's not a competition. But uh, for perspective, Gareth to tell me there's he's fit, him and his uh, cousin and everyone that's farming here, you have 15,000 sheep. On this area, yes. Yeah, yeah, that, so. That, that's something else. Yeah, yeah that's no, pretty well. We're gathering this area, which is most probably about three, 4,000 acres today. Um, and we're on seven different gatherings. And so we start right at the far end there, Conway, and we go all the way through to Neely Llanlechid. So uh, it's it's a big old uh, piece of mountain, but what an office. Oh, just unbelievable. And you guys are going to see loads of footage in this video of, well, basically me, you know, driving about on the bike, trying to roll off and <laughs> stay, stay in the path that Gareth uh, has set for me because like I am not a hill farmer at all, hill sheep farmer at all. You know, I'm from the lowlands of Ayrshire. It, it, it's that green in Ayrshire they named a dairy cow after it. Like it, that's that's where I'm from. So this kind of rough ground is is new to me. But it's it, it's great experience to be out here with the guys and what a team they've got like this. I can't actually believe how simple this whole thing's been. It's like you know I arrived this morning, everyone knew their job. It's just like yep, follow me. Yeah. And away we went, all split up. Yeah. And now the sheep are heading down. Back yep. towards the farm. So we head down for Tintley Van to my farm now and then we'll all be there sorting the sheep out. So we've got alleys and you'll get to see that and you'll see how people then take their sheep home and then we'll be dosing ours and just taking, you know, the lambs out, the woolly ones, a couple of ones that we've lost over the summer. And then yeah, we'll be ready then to turn the tups you call them, the meherin we call them. So the, yeah, the rams will be going to these in about oh, eight to 10 days. The thing that, that I and 80 odd thousand people love about Gareth's uh, Facebook page and his social media things that he does, is he's all about promoting farming and sheep and how we kind of, uh, you can stop me if I'm wrong here, but yeah. they're starting to get a skewed idea in the media that farming's ruining the planet. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, Look at this place. Like, this, this place is an environmental gold mine. You know, you've got flora and fauna, you've got mosaics of different habitats, we've got wildlife, we've got some of the rarest birds up here from the chuff to the twite. This is the problem the environmentalists um, don't get. They don't listen to the people that work the land. Yeah. My family's been working this land for 375 years. If we don't know, how to survive and how to make sure there's a future in this ground nobody does exactly and that's the sort of passion that just comes across so well and that's what people need to hear because i think a lot of the people that are making you know these environmental uh, bills and things like that and part they've never been to these places no no Do you know they'll see them for the roadside or that but they've never been here and seen what it's about you know they just They've just, I feel there's just a, such a false train of thought just now and, and what regarding we need, food production. What we need to understand as well, Cameron, is that every single area, every single mountain will be different. So when you put a blanket policy, you know, to fit everything, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, we were the first society to set up a PLC in this mountain, mm -hmm. 2006. Yeah. 
This is the last time the sheep will be on this mountain until the 1st of April. So we let this mountain regenerate, you know, rejuvenate and get, you know, a little bit of time to rest. And it gets six months off and then we bring the sheep back up. That's how we've always farmed, you know. Have the Hendra, it's making sure we watch after the ground because the ground watches after us. Once you rape and pillage, you can take this away in a generation. Mm -hmm. And that's where we need to be careful. We need young people up here having an understanding of how these mountains work and how we protect our wildlife, our food sources, our systems, and the whole ecology of this amazing place. Brilliant, brilliant. It's, like, it's, just, it's great to hear. Like, I, I obviously listen to it all the time, but for, for any of you that haven't, Join Gareth's page already. Most of you UK people will have, of course, who's probably the biggest name in sheep farming in the UK, apart from maybe Amanda Owen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's a lot prettier than me, though. <laughs> she's, uh, she's very good, guys. Yeah, she's but, brilliant. Yeah, she she, to brilliant. be fair, she's on quite a hard bit as well. Yes. That's some place yeah. that. No, um, do you know what? And what she does up there is truly fantastic. And that's what we need, you know, we need more people like that so we can educate the general public about sustainable food production. Yeah, brilliant. And you can just act like you can just see the passion that Gareth has there. And obviously that's part of the reason why he's been so successful because that comes across so well. And it's what we need. We need guys like him who have a voice and, and can build and aren't afraid to stand up and say, you know, what they really think. Which is what he does, which what, is what, he's what? like the Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> he's like the Jeremy Clarkson and all I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but Where's Anderson? I, what, one of the things I've been taught from a very young age from my father, you know, is honesty is always the best policy. So we have to be honest with each other and you know, sometimes you're gonna say things people aren't gonna like, but they have to hear it. Yep. And and that's the truth. And to drive forward, we have to be honest with the general public so they have an understanding of how food's produced yep. and how they are gonna support us in the future. Where my problem is Cameron and you know this is where we have to have an understanding so we've got companies now so we've got Tesco's, we've got British Aero, Aerospace, we've got um, Heathrow Airport, we've got these massive multinational countries, companies from abroad coming over and buying this yeah, land yeah. and what they're doing is putting carbon credits yeah. so they can carry on ruin the planet yeah. but they think they're doing a good job by taking that land out of production to grow trees it's bloody wrong it's and weird. we need to address it okay oh, totally. we need to keep the people on the land there's nothing wrong with trees in the right place in the right situation but trees don't sequest half as much as what this does this area will be holding more carbon than any single forest yeah. in the UK. This is a massive carbon sink yeah. and that's what we need to remember and it's because it's managed in a sustainable way. And the, and the problem and what worries me about the whole thing is that it's so short-sighted just now like you say this nonsense. Yeah. The growing population of the world, the way things we need the food production element exactly. as well. Like, that, exactly. like there's going to come a time where yeah. actually the UK government, the way it's going, in Scotland in particular, the way they are just now, I think, because I don't know as much yeah. about the Welsh government, but there's going to come a time where they're actually like, oh, hold on, we don't have enough food. Yeah. Let's rip these trees out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or let's cut more down in the Amazon. Uh, all right, well. Uh, and, and grow some stuff out there so we can ship in here. They're handicapping themselves a little bit, which, and I, I agree we need to do more, like yeah. in terms of. Yeah. I think there's probably a thousand planes above us right now. Yeah, there would be. You're but, on the but, but, but this is the problem. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, that's but yeah. we could go we could go on about it forever. Yeah. We'll uh, we'll get down off this slope, the guys are getting away from us. Aye, we'll, oh we'll, we'll get the sack. We'll follow <laughs> these sheep down and uh, we'll see them in the fanks. <laughs> These mountains that Gareth and his family farm are just incredible and the stark contrast of the steep terrain so close to the sea make for some really special views. On my way back down I'm blessed with several sightings of the famous Carnathai ponies which Gareth is a real champion of and works hard to preserve the breed here on the mountains.
Once we are off the mountains, I'm treated to some fantastic green pastures as we wind our way down towards the farm and our final destination for today's gather. drone footage of the sheep is just mesmerising and watching everyone work together to guide the sheep in the right direction is really fun to watch from the sky. This video wouldn't be a true reflection of sheep farming though if we didn't have some drama. Q Jack the Jack Russell tearing through the middle of the sheep just as they're about to turn up the farm road. And as you can see here the sheep go everywhere. Cue my erratic controls on the drone trying to catch everything on camera as the majority of the breakaways sneak down the road towards the village. Now we have a full blown recovery mission on our hands. These Welsh mountain ewes seem very happy to split up and go multiple ways as they escape down the hill, even ending up in one of the neighbours gardens here. Although I'm sure this isn't the first time they've looked out their window and saw sheep in their garden. We've got the sheep down off the hill, as you saw there. Hopefully I've managed to pull together a good montage. As you know, when I film this section here, I don't know what the rest of it is going to look like, but I know some of those shots were amazing. Quite an effort driving the bike and flying the drone at the same time. So much going on here. There's people coming to pick their sheep up. A lot, a lot of people about. We're on the shedding gates here. I'll just briefly talk you through the process of what's happening here with a little voiceover. Okay, really easy part to explain here. The sheep are all run through the race system together and using multiple shedding gates, they're split into their different lots. Now, how do they know what sheep go where? It's actually really simple. There's big, colourful paint marks on the sheep. Each farmer will have their own mark that has probably been the same for generations. So the guys here all know what sheep belong to what farmers. It's a simple system, but very effective. Come on, 
Should we get some tidy car here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Harry, race! Harry, race! Come on! Stop eating sweets! <laughs> Come on, Harry! You won't say no, would you? Oh, nothing. Thank you. You think you're looking well? Pan? Looking well? I am, a, I am all the sheep. No, the sheep are looking well. <laughs> you're right. Uh, you too. I you went upside course. down, me. Aye, aye. Yeah, with start, one yeah. of them things, yeah. Aye, it'll not be and the first I, time. And I was on the level. Ah. <laughs> I say it'll not be the first time. Ah, no. no. <laughs> the other day, I'm doing the fencing there, six poles on the front of the tra uh, the motorbike, and I'm going up uh, through the bracken, and all went over a big stone, and went, but the um, the poles held. Oh, the up. So I was underneath, but the, I couldn't go on it, so I was all right. Like, yeah, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Some man. Yeah, Some I've been man. in hospital three or four times. I had uh, four fractured, four broken ribs, uh, punctured lung, and a six inch gash in there going over them. Hell that's farming, it. eh? Pan? Hell farming. That's, that's hill farming, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice out that northerly wind here. Yeah, just talk about what, what a day we've got now. Nice and fresh, wasn't it, up there? But there's a difference from the mountain down to the bottom. Of here, course, there always yeah. is, eh? There always is. Hugh's not used to it, see, he lives on Angle, see, he's a low lander, Hugh, now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you and, me, you and me both, you and me both. Hard to shoot. So the sheep have been split into their different lots, as I explained there. All about these keel marks, flock marks, as they may be called. We would call them flock marks, and that's the easy way to know whose sheep is whose, rather than worrying about ear tags. Despite the fact they will have individual ear tags for each flock, nice bright colours on them like this means it's nice and quick to shed them as they run up the race, and because. Such a big area, so many different groups of sheep, you need a few shedding gates and some of them had to be run through again to draw them out. So now we've got that done, time to get them through the race and give them a doze and I'm not sure what else Gareth has planned. Let's find out. Close the bloody door! <laughs> Not the gates! What are you doing with them here, Gary? So, dosing for a uh, fluke now more than anything, but it is a fluke and worm doser. And it's a, uh, you know, it's a mountain that can have a little bit of that problem so we just keep on top of it like everything else a really important part of good management especially with uh, the ewes looking so well they can go back very quickly and flukes are, it's a silent killer and by the time you find it it's too late but you can tell these are in good nick and they're not they're not dropping when you're collecting them so uh, no, no. you know, we're very happy with them This is Cameron, he's come all the way from Scotland, he's doing some filming with us today. So this is my wife, Brianne. Brianne, how are you? Yeah. I've seen you of course. Yes, you have. Yeah, as has everyone I suppose. Oh, I <laughs> Famous by proxy. Yes, by proxy indeed, yes. Yeah. yes. She loves it really. You know. <laughs> you know, it's a great environment. Look how well she looks. Yeah. Yes. yes. But that's because she's got a really good husband that looks after her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm only 25, you know. Yeah. <laughs> look how bad I'm looking. Listen, listen, they said you haven't changed from that picture there. Yeah, you look about the same. 
Wow, yeah, that's about ten, 15 years, <laughs> isn't it? 10 <laughs> years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of Americans, Hi, Keith and Linda, hello. come up with Jackie today to have a wonderful time. And for the first time in a long time, I haven't done the tour because I've been gathering sheep. And um, yeah, they've sure. had the tour offshore, my son and my uh, beautiful wife, Rianne. And Linda, how are the Welsh cakes that Rianne cooked for you? Oh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in Wales is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Even me. <laughs> We're living the dream. Lovely yeah. to see the guests coming back. And we're looking forward to 2022 and a lot more people on the farm. Uh, it's been such a good day, honestly. It's been a great day, great laughs. Yeah. Like, it's fantastic. And I think that I'm going to leave a lot in this video, or, well, this is the ending you're watching, so I will have left a lot in, is the fact that you know, all the guys here, well, most of the guys here speak Welsh. And is Welsh your first language? Yes, yeah. first language, yeah. And, like, yeah. I just find that just brilliant it's like being in the western isles of scotland where like they all speak gaelic first and then like english second yeah. which is just it's such a special thing because here's an interesting bit of trivia i meant oh. to google this before i came okay. you'll know the answer to this yeah. I hope. there's only two places in the world that speak welsh what are they patagonia and wales patagonia speak welsh it's like a ver like a slight no no yeah they've got a little bit of spanish in it but they traveled from wales and set up a new um colony or, or, or yeah, a new, yeah. new country for them and uh, they kept the language which is absolutely amazing oh a great bit of knowledge for a pub quiz like someday that's going to come up at a pub quiz <laughs> name the two countries that speak welsh the welsh have got a saying okay a lle i'r ennaid a place for your soul to find peace and this is that place that's it that's it and i do really feel like it is, it's it's an incredible and i do feel like really akin to like the Scottish Highlands. Yeah. Like it's got that yeah. same magic feel History about it. It's and, it's yeah. it's brilliant. And and the way it just drops off into the sea, like you said, that's yeah. rare. Like even up with us, that's rare. Very, very rare. Yeah. Isn't it? Very rare. And it, it's an amazing place. So no, thanks for having me down for the day. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I should say, I, I had my Ridgeline jacket on earlier. The Ridgeline guys actually sent me some stuff, I should say that. I've, I've not actually done enough to say thanks very much, guys. So I felt like big time like Gareth here, you know. They're, it's great gear though, isn't it? We it should is. really say. It's really good stuff, to be fair. Yeah. And the stuff that I'm testing for Ridgeline for next season is truly amazing, you know. Um, I don't wear things unless they're fit for purpose. Yeah. And, you need it um, up here. Oh, like you 100%, said. you know. Yeah. and. Um, Good clothing um, is a big part of keeping healthy up here. Yeah, no, and 100% that monsoon, I think it's a monsoon smock that I yeah. wear. Is that the yeah. one I had? Yep. Same as me. Yours yeah. is maybe a more modern one, is yeah, it? Yes, the brand new one and prototypes yeah. and testing stuff. <laughs> I'll get that next year. <laughs> but no, I never get, I, I haven't actually done enough to say thanks very much to Ridgeline for sending me that stuff. So there you go. <laughs> we've, we've hyped you up. Thanks very much. And that's us finished this one. Sheep fans, we're going to go and get a bite of lunch. It's been a great day. I hope I've pulled together a good vlog and we'll see you for the next one. Living the dream. <laughs> Thanks also to John from Thomas Murray Agricultural Engineers in Dundonald for letting me borrow this CF Moto quad bike again. A fantastic bit of kit, it made real ease of the hills here in Wales. Look at this behind me here, sheep fans. I know the audio won't be great because of the wind, but I just had to stop and just appreciate it for a second. Like, I've got to take a picture of my phone. Oh, the, the door. <laughs> <laughs> the dog really took the drone away there. <laughs> that would have been good. Do you know where the good fish is? No, I don't want to know either. You yeah, probably know everywhere. Fishing. Where would you be today? Fishing. Exactly. <laughs>